This week, Will Smith and Kevin Klein blaze through the wild, wild west. And rocker Ryan Cooter heads a tour of Cuban musicians in the Buena Vista Social Club. And America and Canada go to war in South Park. Bigger, longer, and uncut. Gordon, I think you need to calm down. I can't be calm. No, 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 no. I'm the master of the mechanical stuff, and I have to help you. You, the master of the stupid stuff. Will Smith and Kevin Klein are federal agents on the trail of a madman in Wild Wild West, one of five new movies we're going to review this week. I'm Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times, and across the aisle from me is this week's guest critic. I'm Wesley Morris, film critic for the San Francisco Examiner, and thanks for having me here, Roger. Thanks for being here. Welcome aboard. Okay, first movie, and it's a mess. Wild Wild West is a tortured attempt at comedy that falls flat in scene after scene, leaving his two stars stranded in material that seems pounded into the screenplay with a mallet. Will Smith and Kevin Klein star as a couple of federal agents assigned by President U.S. Grant, also played by Klein, to solve the disappearance of a lot of scientists. The trail leads out west where Klein perfects his art of disguise. You look nasty, just butt ugly. I mean, your breasts were hard and stiff and sticking out like a couple of rusty cannons on a sunken ship. These breasts are a work of art. The two are joined by Salma Hayek, who is searching for her scientist father, and they head west in a train that Klein has rigged with a lot of goofy invention. Well, see if your aggressor invention works. We need a plan. Push the button. Very good. They encounter a mad villain played by Kenneth Branagh, who has constructed engines of war that would look more at home in Star Wars. Well, now, isn't this a coincidence? I'm out for a little morning ride, and right in the middle of nowhere, I bump into General Ulysses S. Grant himself. We've never been properly introduced. I'm Dr. Arliss Loveless, formerly of the Confederate Army. Here's another strange scene in which the heroes have been bolted into magnetic collars that are supposed to attract flying guillotine blades. Gordon, leap into my arms. No. No! I don't know if you could sense it in those scenes, but there's zero chemistry between Will Smith and Kevin Klein. In fact, none of the actors seem to really be inhabiting this movie. They all project the air of wishing desperately that they were elsewhere. A fortune was spent on the special effects of Wild Wild West, but no one seems to have taken a step back and observed that, hey, the screenplay stinks. This is an astonishingly bad movie. Well, Roger, I don't know if you noticed this either, but the screenplay seems to be planted in Kevin Klein's head. Oh. I mean, he seems to sort of know everything that's happening at, at all points, and he can get from one place to the next. And Yeah, he had but, his little uh, rail car was all jury rigged so that no matter what anybody did, his right. invention was ready for them. Which well, one is of the other things you didn't mention, though, strange. Uh, in your review, was that Will Smith and the whole slave yeah. thing, and, and that's an actual plot point uh -huh. where he's trying to find out who killed his parents, yeah. I guess. It's sort of set around this entire sort of post slavery thing where he can't go anywhere without someone giving him a hard time because he's black. And how he sort of got to become Jim West, this sort of this lawman, isn't really explained at all. But, I mean, he's, he's well, like the you know, visible it man. It was all just plot and points. It was, first, he's a federal agent, but then also he has this backstory, which I thought was a little too serious to be dignified well, right, in a comedy it's a movie, of this sort. It's and then a there are all these racial comments right. and so-called jokes leading up actually to a lynch mob scene where that aren't funny at all. They just make you want to cringe. Well, they're cringeworthy only because in the context of all the psych yeah. it, it sort of takes this serious subject and makes fun of it without sort of giving you the background information you need. I think it sort of finds Will Smith in a really interesting position, too, constantly having to sort of, uh, the bigger he gets, he hasn't changed at all. Mm -hmm. But he's sort of been required more to sort of explain that he's black without the script having to explain it to us. That's a good point. Anyway, our next movie, and it's the Buena Vista Social Club. Vin Vendor's frustrating documentary and concert film about the band called the Buena Vista Social Club, a collection of some of Cuba's most venerable vocalists and instrumentalists. The film jumps between recording sessions for singer Ibrahim Ferrer, which are produced by the American guitarist Ry Cooter, plus brief bios of the group's members and concert footage. Here, Cooter talks about his interest in the band. These were people that I had heard on records over the years, had no idea whether they were living or dead. Ruben Gonzalez hadn't even had a piano in 10 years. One of the more interesting things that the movie tries to explain is what happened to these great Cuban musicians. More people, you know, have died, but so many are left, so... We always want to try to find those people. You know, they might be down the street, they might be here, who knows? Might be around the corner, you never know. The movie ends with Buena Vista Social Club's rousing, legendary performance at Carnegie Hall last year. The 
director of Vendors is looking for harmony between these musicians and their lives and their music, but he just creates discord. This movie is like getting burned by a scratch CD. In this case, that's tragic because there are so many stirring passages in Buena Vista Social Club, but they're edited in such a disruptive way that you're alienated from what that Carnegie Hall crowd is feeling, for instance. What we get is an overstimulated package that plays like a somber Buena Vista highlight reel. I agree with you completely. The music is great, the musicians are great, the album is great, the movie is frustrating because he never lets an entire song play. Well, every time... He cuts right. away, and during the Carnegie Hall uh, concert, it's like he told the cameraman, every single shot has to end with a pan up the to Ry Cooter, who was benevolently nodding down at them, right. like uh, he's kind of their guardian angel or something. Right. And I, I just couldn't, I wanted to really be involved with this, I wanted to feel it, I wanted to experience it, because I know the album's great, and I know that the concert was so incredible. But you sort of get these vignettes, yeah. uh, where each, each, each player in the band sort of gets to give their bio, and they're sort of represented as these which, troubadours which that walk be, down the street. That would be okay, it's kind of the build-up, but you know... I wish we just had a concert film. Right, I mean, them, that concert was so great. I was thinking it would have of a similar a movie. There's a itself. similar documentary called the, the Weavers, Wasn't That a Time? Right. And it's about the Weavers. They were around for a long time. They're old people now. They have a farewell concert at Carnegie Hall. The last half hour of that movie is their concert at Carnegie Hall, and it really, really moves you. Right. Here, Vinders constantly cuts away from the emotion into the structure of his documentary, and it just becomes a distraction. It becomes yeah, it's, a frustration. it's really distracting, and I, and I really wish that he had sort of taken more care in the editing process to sort of either structure the film so that what you get is that, that Ibrahim Ferrer mm -hmm. recording session, sure. and you get the bios of the band, but I mean, what you're building toward is that, con that Carnegie yeah. Hall concert. And it and, doesn't pay off. And it doesn't pay off. Okay. I mean, you want to be moved, but you're not. You're right. Coming up later in the program, the animated satire <laughs> South Park. Bigger, longer, and uncut. I'm sorry, I can't help myself. That movie has warped my fragile little mind. Coming up next, a British story of love, sex, and religion, My Son the Fanatic. In all engagement party details, personally, our tradition is beautiful in this respect. You enjoy our food when I bring it personally to police headquarters. A taxi driver from Pakistan who immigrated to England 25 years ago was proud there that his son is engaged to marry the police inspector's daughter, and that scene from My Son the Fanatic. He's so proud that he doesn't notice the way the other family is condescending to him, but his son does and breaks off the engagement, and then the son announces he's embraced religious things. fundamentalism. Om Puri, a wonderful actor, plays the taxi driver. I'm checking out. Oh. I won't bring up my children in this country. They live in pornography and filth. The taxi driver works nights and often drives hookers around his town in the British Midlands. He likes one of them, played by Rachel Griffiths. One night, there's an unexpected development. See you tomorrow. Hey, call me Sandra when we're alone. This is the password, yeah? To you? <laughs> Know when I last kissed a man. Does this unlikely couple have a future together? Well, for a time, it looks like they might. The movie is honest enough not to impose any neat and easy solutions on the problems of its characters. In fact, the last shot of the movie, which is held for a long time over the closing credits, shows deep indecision. This is a movie alive with the humanity of its characters. Funny, sad, tough, and very good. I'm really glad you liked it, Roger. Such a beautiful, intimate movie about identity politics played out on, an, on, a, on a large scale. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it's really sort of about this man and how he's coming to terms with the fact that he's become this person that nobody seems to be happy with. Mm -hmm. And that last shot is so beautiful because it's just him in his house sort of accepting all of these things that have sort of been happening around him. And it's a, it's a really quiet moment. And Ampere is great. Yes, he is. I've um, seen him in, in several other movies. And uh, he has a kind of a presence on the screen. He's not conventionally good looking, but you can see how he would be attractive to this woman because he's dependable and he's honest and he's straightforward right. and because he trusts her and sees her as a person. The nice thing about the Rachel Griffiths character is uh, she doesn't overplay the hooker. She's a sex no, worker. Right. She, she does this. It's a job for as her. a job. She hates it. Well, she understands the place she has in society, but she really just sort of wants to be a woman who loves this guy. Mm -hmm. It's a really great movie, and Hernif Karechi is such a 
Great writer. You've got it. Okay, coming up next, the bad boys of Comedy Central up the ante in South Park. Bigger, longer, and uncut. Like you really need all that chocolate, fat boy. Ba, 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 ba. Shh, the movie's starting. Yes, yes, I saw the Terrence and Philip movie. Who wants to touch me? I said, who wants to touch me? Ooh. Come on, Gag. We gotta see the Terrence and Philip movie, too. <laughs> Cartman and the gang are skating to their pop culture doom in the big screen version of South Park, called South Park Bigger, Longer, and Uncut. A title that could easily refer to the British that never happened to South Park or Kyle Bravlowski, or the fact that for me anyway, this film is the best way to experience Trey Parker and Matt Stone's controversial Comedy Central cartoon series. The Terrence and Phillip movie that the kids are psyched to see is a rated R fart fest that teaches the middle school youth of South Park to swear convulsively. Cartman, Kyle, and Stan share their knowledge with their classmates to get sent to the principal's office. Well, here's a short list of the things they've been saying, okay? Oh, dear God. Young man, you will tell Mr. Mackey this instant where you heard all these horrible phrases. I... I... We can't tell you. We all took a sacred oath and swore ourselves to secrecy. It was the Terrence and Phillip movie. Dude! What? F*** you guys. I want to get out of here. Terrence and Phillip, the stars of the movie in question, are Canadian and are soon held hostage by angry American parents. A disgraced Canadian government storms the UN and demands that they let my people go. The fuss is about taking our citizens. It's about not censoring our heart. It's about... It's about... What's the damn funny? <laughs> no, nothing, nothing. Uh, could you tell us again what your argument is all about? This is not about diplomacy. This is about dignity. This is about respect. This is about... And after being unmercifully mocked in that scene, Canada actually declares war on the United States. However, South Park is also a shrewd full-length musical. Oh, the snow's pure and white on the earth, rich and brown. Just another Sunday morning in my quiet mountain town. Sly, fearless, and shockingly indisposable. <laughs> Bigger, Longer, and Uncut works both as a satire of and an assault on the show's own problems with censorship, the First Amendment, bad parenting, and maybe even cynicism as we know it. Also, the show's art direction gets new life in a movie theater as you can really appreciate its multi-textured pop collage design that looks like an arts and crafts project. And one of the things we didn't show you was the depiction of a hell ruled by a big gay Satan who's actually a closeted good guy and who, devil as he is, may also be the most fully realized gay man I've ever seen in a Hollywood movie. But there's no shame in finding brilliance in a movie with a gay Satan or combustible flatulence. I think at last the art has been restored to fart while lacerating the hypocrisy of our great American culture. Well, I think I've seen more fully realized gay men in movies than Satan in this film, even I, despite know. his love affair with Saddam Hussein. It's really a send-up of that idea that, like, he's, he's openly gay, but now, he's a good guy. Well, I've seen that before. I, well, I mean, I, I'll tell you about South Park in general. It has some laughs in it, right. and it is slashingly fearless satire, that's true, but it's also so mean, but it I is think so mean-spirited and so negative, and you feel as you sit in the audience, even when you're laughing, you're not proud of what you're laughing at. But I mean, the issues it raises sort of, it smacks It doesn't it puts itself, raise issues, it just it pushes the issues. It puts itself right in the middle of this debate about, it, it, this particular moment, it's really timely about the First Amendment. And, and the media and culture's yeah, ability to okay, sort of so the First Amendment minds. gives us the right to hear all these words, none of which we could no, show but on I television. Mean, but, but what about all the racial slurs? What about all the Jewish I mean, it's and in, black it's in uh, the context, insults? But it's in the context of this farce in which, ever, in see, which I even think the we army... Can sit here, we can sit here intellectually and talk about how it's in the context of a farce, but millions of people who go to the movies just learn that it's okay to make fun of Jews. I don't think that's. I mean, they I see think it on the screen. True. Oh, everybody's going to laugh at that. Oh, I can't believe he said that. It's but I mean, not he, really good to lower the bar like that and to tell think, people, I don't oh, that's the, okay now. But I don't think the bar has been lowered. I think it's it's all actually been raised. I mean, this movie is trying not only trying to figure out what it, with what trying to figure out what it can get away with, but it's also trying to maybe bring to some understanding the idea that. It's a TV show that's sort of saying that movies are capable of influencing people in a way that they wouldn't be able to be movies influenced Movies are on TV. capable of influencing people. But it's people. also... And this movie is going to influence people. I mean, if anything, it'll make people think about what they're seeing as opposed to just watching it blindly. Well, I hope so. Okay, next movie. And our next movie is a Chinese film named The King of Masks, about a poor but respected street entertainer whose specialty is the traditional art of lightning fast changes of masks. One day, a famous member of the Sichuan Opera sees him performing. The 
opera star wants to buy the old man's secrets, and when the old man refuses, the star advises him to find an heir, or otherwise the secrets will die with him. It's a time of great poverty, and the king of mass is indeed able to adopt a young orphan boy. Then there's a shocking development. The little boy is actually a girl in disguise. The old man loves the child he calls Doggy, but finds it hard to accept that his son has become a daughter. <laughs> the King of Mass was not really intended as a film for children, but like a lot of good films, it works equally well, if in different ways, for both children and grown-ups. It shows the fascinating world of China undergoing rapid change in the 1930s as old art forms and old ideas are threatened. And in the human story of old Wang and his beloved foster child, there's great tenderness and emotion. This is the kind of movie that gets swept aside by the big commercial powerhouses. Seek it out. It's worth it. This movie stands for something positive as opposed to the negative, mean-spirited ugliness of South Park. It's so not fair. This is a melodrama. I mean, it's, it's good. It's fine. But, I mean, you can see every single thing churning in this movie. It, I mean, it's... It, it's a kitchen sinker. I mean, everything is designed to get you to cry by the end of it. It's, I mean, it's, it's great. Mm -hmm. It didn't work for me. I mean, I liked it and I was entertained. But I, w I mean, I wasn't moved and I felt like it really wanted you to cry. I mean, every, every uh, it turn. Didn't, it didn't make me want to cry. It just it's, moved me. It, it, it involved me. This guy and his love for this little creature and the sexism of China at that time that all that him... stuff is great yeah. it's great uh -huh. but I think it's played on this incredibly melodramatic scale where you've got all these signs you've got that monkey that's sort of following the, the yeah guy I like the it. monkey I mean and the monkey's think, fine, what about but... for children because you know oh, for children you know the children are going to go to South Park the for... makers of South Park have already said publicly the kids will find a way around the R rating now well, if sure, you had but... an eight-year-old kid would you rather they saw King of Masks or South Park. Well, Roger, South Park is rated R. It's not. It doesn't it's mean mature, a thing. But I mean, what eight-year-old kid is? What I'm saying. Thousands is, of them. Fine. Thousands of but them. But South Park is not. I mean, it's aimed at a more sophisticated audience as much as as much as yeah. it's aimed for like a, a smaller one. Because I think a lot of the brilliance of South Park will go over an eight-year-old eight-year-old's head. Yeah. You know. Okay, um, well, I, but I think for adults too. I mean, if you want to feel kind of good about yourself, you feel better yeah. about yourself after King of Masks. At least I. I did. felt okay. Okay, when we come back, Bill Paxton and Billy Bob Thornton in my video pick of the week. It's a police matter now. What do you think we should do? What if we didn't turn it in? of a typical dandruff sufferer. Note his painful isolation, his social embarrassment, his pitiful lack of confidence. Note his brand new dandruff shampoo, Nizerol AD, the world's number one prescribed ingredient for dandruff, now in non-prescription strength. Just twice a week with Nizerol AD can turn this typical dandruff sufferer into a person free of dandruff. New Nizerol AD, the freedom will go to your head. Siskel and Ebert's video pick of the week is brought to you by Nestle's Raisinets. At the movies or at home, Raisinets. My video pick this week is one of the best films of recent years. And although it got Oscar nominations, it didn't draw audiences as large as I at least think it deserved. The movie is a simple plan. And it tells the story of three small town neighbors who stumble across a plane that has crashed in the woods with four million dollars on board. It's the American dream and a damn gym bag. He, he just wants to walk away from it. You work for the American dream, you don't steal it. Then this is even better. Bill Paxton plays the smartest of the three, a college graduate. Billy Bob Thornton is his dim-witted brother, and Brent Briscoe is a friend of Thornton's and a very loose cannon. I don't have the money here, and even if I did, I wouldn't give you any. Oh, come on, now look, j just because you have it doesn't mean it's yours. Part of that is my money. Part of it might be your money. If we decide to keep it. 
A simple plan moves inexorably from a dream of wealth to a nightmare of blood and guilt, and director Sam Raimi handles the material with perfect pitch and timing so that we're drawn step by step into the trap that these men set for themselves. It's a powerful film, and it's my video pick of the week. We need a vacation, one bite at a time. Deliciously rich, new cheesecake bites, creamy right out of the freezer. Sarah Lee, add some delicious to your life. Excuse me, number eight bus go here. About number nine. Who are you looking at? Dry cleaners wouldn't take a check again, eh, Nozzle? Use Visa Check Card. It automatically deducts from your checking account everywhere Visa's accepted. So you can get what you need and get on with life. When you combine Reese's Peanut Butter Cups and Crispy Wafers, the combination is irresistible. Reese Sticks. The crisp you can't resist. Now let's take another look at the movies we reviewed this week. Two thumbs down for Wild Wild West. I thought it was astonishingly bad. Wesley liked parts of it, but didn't like the racial aspect. Two thumbs down on Buena Vista Social Club. We both admired My Son the Fanatic, especially for its fine performances by Om Puri and Rachel Griffiths. We split, though, on South Park, bigger, longer, and uncut. I thought it was mean-spirited, but Wesley felt it was sly, fearless, and funny. And finally, two recommendations for The King of Mass, the touching story about an old street performer and the child he loves. But I liked it more than you did. You thought it was a little bit too melodramatically contrived. Yeah, it's a formula. So the one we both like the most is... It's my Son the Fanatic, My I Son think. the Fanatic. Yeah, but South Park is great. According to you. Okay, thanks a lot for being here. <laughs> Thank you for having me, Roger. Appreciate it. Fun. Okay. Remember, you can hear our reviews on the web at siskel-ebert.com, part of the Go Network. That's both Wesley and myself. Next week, more new movies, including Tim Robbins and Jeff Bridges in the political thriller Arlington Road, and also the raunchy coming-of-age comedy American Pie. That's next week, and until then, the balcony is closed. For a limited time, save 25% off Monarchy's lifetime mufflers, backed by a nationwide warranty. At Meineke, you won't pay a lot, but you'll get a lot. 1-800-US-SEARCH. Locate a long-lost friend or family member. Find anyone. Call 1-800-US-SEARCH. America Online 4.0, the easiest just got easier. AOL has got it all. Email, internet, and a whole lot more. Where else are you going to find all this? America Online, so easy to use, no wonder it's number one. Nothing tastes like popcorn cooked in a pot on the stove. Except... Mmm, new home-style microwave popcorn from Pop Secret. Closed captioning for Siskel and Ebert is brought to you by... Pick Hot Pockets and get real food with real ingredients. Real cheddar cheese, real sliced ham, real vegetables, real food for a busy life. Hot Pockets!